Welcome to Ucanic. Today here in Ucanic we have a 2017 Jaguar XE. This Jaguar XE has a 3.0 liter V6 motor in it with a supercharger. We have some check engine codes on and we're going to go ahead and check those codes and then we're going to have a discussion about what those codes mean and what those codes are. So you'll need your vehicle on in the run position but not started to be able to check your engine codes. We have the OBD2 scanner hooked up to the uh, OBD2 port and the, the UCAN2. Then we can go into diagnostic and we're going to be under the European because we have the Jaguar or you can go through the all but tap the Jaguar option and then we're going to get smart VIN and that's going to bring us back our VIN number and, and uh, what model of vehicle we have. And we hit yes. Then we're going to go into diagnostic. We're going to hit control modules. We can scan the whole vehicle if we wanted to, but we know that we are looking at just the engine, so I'm just going to pick the control modules. And then the powertrain, and we're going to read the codes. Okay, so in the codes, we have four different codes. All of these codes are cam position sensors. There's four cam position sensors on this vehicle, but we only we have the code and a very short information here which is basically a repeat of the code. So you may need to look it up on a different different search. But we have the P0343, the P0348, the P0368, and the P0393. Those are the four codes that we have on here. And like I said, they're all cam position sensors. And now we'll have a discussion about those cam position sensors. So when you have the code go off, there can be more than one reason why your cam position sensor is, is um, giving you a bad code. Generally, you're only going to have one or maybe two that go off at the same time. But for the information purposes, I have all four of them in there to be read so that we can discuss it. Now, there's um, two banks on this engine because it's a V6. So you have bank one and you have bank two. Right, and this is as you're looking at the vehicle from the front, bank one is on the left side and bank two is on the right side. Now also in those cam position sensor, when you look them up, on bank one you have a sensor A and you have a sensor B. On bank two you have a sensor A and a sensor B. And that's the, the way it will work, right? On a V6 engine, V8 engine, you can always, anything that's a, uh, a V series, you'll have a bank one and bank two. So, to gain access to the cam position sensors, we need to remove a few components to get better access to the cam position sensors on this engine. So first we're going to need to pop this cover off, and this is just held on by some grommets. You pop it off and pull this off. Then, we have this air intake tubing that goes to your dual air um, filter boxes, uh, one on each side. And so there is a 10 millimeter bolt that goes right here that we have removed. There is seven millimeter here, seven millimeter here, and seven millimeter on the, the other, the right hand side. We have one vacuum hose right here that you need to squeeze that clamp and be able to pull off. It can be a, it's a very tough plastic. Once you've done all that and loosen the clamp bolts and the one clamp bolt that's down in here, then you'll be able to remove this air in, in tube. And it goes straight into the throttle body. The throttle body one is a bit snug and tight, like it should be. And so then you'll be able to remove that and set that to the side. And now we get to this side, and this is bank one. And then this is the intake side, and this is the exhaust side of our cams. We're going to have dual cams on both sides. The intake side is the position A on our sensors. And so position A in bank one, that is the P0343. So if we have a 343, we know that that should be bank one, position A. If it is bank one, position B, that code number is a P0368. And so that's bank one, A and B. So all these sensors, the sensors, the cam position sensor, they are all the same identical sensors. They just might be mounted up or side, one upside down from the other, or left or right, however they needed to, to be able to fit it in there. 
but they are the same exact sensor. So if you swap them to double check to make sure that the sensor is what has gone bad and not something else in the, uh, the interior of the engine being the timing chain has had an issue, that you can check it that way. Or you can just buy a new sensor and put it in. And then you, after you replace those sensors, you would you know, drive your car normally for a week or so. And if it doesn't come back on, well then clearly it could just be the sensor. And if it does come back on, well there's something else you may need to look into. And it could be as simple as the wiring connection wasn't working well, or something has frayed uh, in, inside the water wiring harness, or you have something deeper inside the engine. So if we need to replace a cam position sensor, so on this side we have this hose that we can move down, and then these we can move a little bit to the side to get cam position sensor A. We have cam position sensor B right here on bank one, and so we can gain access to that fairly easily, and we need a T30 screw to be able to unscrew that, and then we'll be able to pop. That electric connection, we'll do that. Then we'll get our T30 and be able to loosen this um, D30 bolt there. So we have our cam position sensor bolt here, and that is a T30. I'm just going to loosen that and remove it. And once we remove that screw, now we'll be able to uh, get the sensor out. Sometimes you may need to just spin them a little bit to get them to break from their adhesion because they've been in there, the, the O-rings swell through the heat cycles and whatnot. And then you'll just be able to pull out the sensor and get a new one, make sure that the uh, O-ring came out with the old one that you removed. I said the new one. You make sure that the O-ring came out of the old one that you removed so that they're, you're not pushing any foreign objects into your vehicle. So. They're very simple to replace, and like I said, all of them are the same. They just might be mounted this way, and this way, or whichever. Any way that, that it was designed to go in so that every, all the other components would be able to go where they need to go. So this is cam position sensor B on bank one. And so we can go ahead, take our new sensor, and be able to reinsert it. May put a little bit of oil on the uh, O-ring so that it'll slide in there nice and easy and we just want to make sure that we get it in there with not a lot of force and pressure so that we don't smash the o-ring as we install and you'll take your um your bolt here and be able to snug that bolt in and then you'll want to make sure that you put your electric connector back on and in place and press it to lock. And if you're replacing another sensor of the cam position sensor, it's the same process, you just may have to move a few more things out of the way. Then you'd make sure you put everything back in order and back together. And so that's the uh, two cam position sensors on bank. Position sensor A and B. Supercharged engine. We well, can come to the other side, and now we see on the other side, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to see, to be able to replace the cam position sensors as well as the actuators that are in here. But you just need to be able to remove to move a few things over and out of the way. And number one, we need to move, this is the thermostat housing that uh, goes in here. Now we don't wanna have to undo all of this and have to drain our, our, our fluids if we don't too. So to gain some better access, you'll just wanna remove this air box. And to remove this air box, there is one uh, number 10 millimeter bolt that you can remove over here under your electric connector there and then this um, breather or water cooler line runs there and if you just pop the little cover um, clip out then you'll be able to just pull this air box out and work it out taking care not to break that plastic tube that gives us some space here where we can get this T30 bolt undone to be able to move this to have better access to remove the cam position sensor. All right, so we removed that T30. Now we get some access to be able to pull this a little bit. You need to pop this clamp here. 
to give us some more space to move these up. These are cooling lines that go into the, um, the supercharger, so we also don't want to break those. And then we have a decent amount of space to be able to pull out here and get a small um, ratchet or a, a T30 in there, as well as the one below it, and then be able to just pop those sensors out. There's, of course, more than one way to do the project, but that is some way that we can do it with hopefully not having to remove or drain our coolant out of the whole system and be able to replace position that. sensor a is the one on the top cam position sensor b is the one on the bottom or it could be vice versa but i'm pretty sure that's the way it is because this would be the intake um, sensor and the exhaust the intake is generally sensor a or is sensor a and the exhaust sensor is B. And this was on bank two, the uh, opposite side of the motor. So that is replacement, or how you can replace your cam position sensors and to diagnose which sensor you're looking for on your Jaguar XE with the supercharged engine, which of course would go with any of the 3.0 supercharged engines. Um, uh, the XE, the F-Type, you name it, that has that supercharged engine. It's going to have very similar, just the engine might be mounted a little bit differently and you might have another component in the way that you may need to remove. So once you've gone ahead and replaced the sensors that you need to replace and you put everything back on and back together, you can go into your code reader and making sure that your ignition is still in the run and on position but not start it. We can go back into the code reader that you can too, and then go back in and clear the codes. And then we can double check by reading them and everything comes back. Now, of course you would start the vehicle and run it and see if they definitely come back. If they don't, then that's hopefully the fix. Like I said, there could be other things that you'll need to look at to make sure that that's all that needs to be fixed. So thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.